Okay, so you've decided which estate agent you think you want to use. So your next step is to get a contract. And so I would just want to take you through some hints and tips on that. Now, the first big tip is have a contract. Um, be surprised how many people I come across who say they don't actually have a contract and they certainly don't know the terms with their agent. They haven't signed anything. And so really, the agents probably left themselves more high and dry there. But it is very important that you have that. And the first thing in your contract which will come up will be what term what length of time um, have they got exclusivity on selling your property so that might be that it's only as uh, four to six weeks but it might be as much as four to six months and agents do vary quite a lot and this is important because if you're not happy with your agent after the first couple of months or so you don't want to have to wait another four months before you can change to somebody else so the term is very important. Secondly is the notice period. So when you've decided that either you don't want to sell anymore or you want to move to a different estate agent, how much, how many weeks notice do they want to terminate your contract? And is it gonna be just one week like it is for myself or is it gonna be four or six weeks even with some of the bigger agents? Um, I do often ask the question is why do they need another four weeks notice when they've already had maybe four months to try and sell your property? So that's a big question to ask them. And then last but not least, on what basis are your contracts? Are you sole agency, which is the most popular, which is where you just sign with one estate agent and give them that time, hopefully they sell it, everybody's happy and you pay them the fee. Uh, one thing to look out for is something called sole selling rights. Now this is a snuck into some contract somewhere and it is quite key you understand this. This means that no matter who buys your house, uh, while you're in that term with that contract, with that particular estate agent. If you say your Auntie Jean came along tomorrow and said, actually, I'd love to buy your house. So can I just, you know, it's a family friend, we just deal deal direct. Um, that estate agent can still charge their fee. Whereas if it's just sole agency, they have to prove they viewed the property with them and they introduce them to your property. The other option is multi-agency where you go on with more than one estate agent. This often costs a little bit more because it's a very much a winner takes all scenario for the estate agent. So there's a risk of them doing lots of work and then actually not getting paid a penny for it. And then there's one other option which is not used very often but is quite worth, worthy of consideration which is joint sole agency. And this is where you have two estate agents both working for you but they both get a cut of the fee. So you might agree a higher percentage overall, but the agents between themselves agree on maybe a 60-40 or a 70-30 split in favour of the estate agent who finally introduces the person that goes through and fully competes on your property purchase. So, the other last thing is just to say, this needs to be in writing and you need to have it either via an email contract, which is a proper contract um, sending service like Yoti Sign or by in paper format. You can have an email version, but you really do need a legal contract. So please do make sure you don't get caught out on those. And I look forward to seeing you on my next top tips.